everybody, it's AJ from Alpha Pixel, and I'm excited to be back doing tutorials for you guys. Today we have an exciting one on how to make it rain in Cinema 4D. It's been a rough year for everybody, so let's print ourselves some virtual money with the program that we love. As usual, I know time is precious, so let's jump right into it. The first thing we need to do is get our dollar bills, which I will leave to you guys to download and cut out yourself. I'm going to use my image to plane plug in here to just import those really quick. Got my fronts and backs here. And now they're all in the scene. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just check out the segments because this is going to affect how playback handles moving forward. So we're just going to want to make sure um, we take a look at that. So by default, you know, the plane comes in 10 by 10 segment. And what we're going to be doing is dropping this, you know, into an emitter, which is going to clone these things. And we're also going to be using soft bodies, which, you know, cinema can handle pretty well. But when you're cloning these things hundreds and hundreds of times or thousands, depending on what you need, you're going to want to be as efficient as possible. So we're going to want to decrease these segments. You know, start with something low and then move your way up. So just being that, the, you know, it's a little more length than height. So we're going to add, you know, four there and three on the height segments there. Oh, but we need to copy that to all of them. So four and three. So we'll start there, and one thing to note too is this will affect how your dollar bill bends in the dynamics. Um, because SoftBody uses springs based on point, uh, the number of points on the object. So uh, obviously the more segments we have, the more springs and the more bendy the dollar bills will get. So, and the less springs, uh, the more stiff the dollar bill will, fe will feel. So let's take this and drop it into our emitter. So we're going to grab our emitter over here and just drop that in there. We can delete our null that it came under. And right away you're going to notice that if you hit play, nothing's going to happen because we need to hit show objects in the emitter. That gets me every time. I always wonder what's going on. Show objects, okay? So it seems to be working. Of course, everything looks horrible and very rigid. So we're gonna, I wanna shoot these up and let the let gravity kind of bring them down. So I'm gonna twist the emitter 90 degrees. And I'm also, I'm gonna rotate the dollar bills cause I don't like them shooting up like that. Um, I'm gonna rotate them all vertically. I'm actually going to hit the PSR really quick and then rotate them vertically. Maybe that didn't matter, but I wanted them all in the same position. If I turn this off, I wanted them all in the same position, then spread out. <clears throat> so now they're all, all right, they're all emitting the way I want them. Now we just got to speed things up. So I'm going to change this to, I don't know, 1,000. Let's just see what that looks like. Not bad. Um, I need to make the emitter wider for what I want to do here. So go into the emitter and change the X size and Y size. Maybe even a bit more. You'll notice they actually get a little slower too. Or maybe that's just my system bogging down. And maybe we'll decrease it just a little more. Okay, perfect. Um, a little bit faster though. Let's go 1500. And you can vary the speeds up too, which might be handy. Some go a little faster than the others. I'm actually gonna go 2000. Okay, let's start there. And then we're gonna want to select all of these here, I'm going to stop the playback, and I'm actually going to add time because we're going to want more time for our simulations to play out. So I'm going to select all my children here and hit soft body. And let's just take a look at what that does. And I'm actually going to turn off the uh, segment view here so we can see. 
So right away you see that at least they're, you know, being affected by gravity. They're all falling back down, which is good. But beyond that, not much is happening. They're staying pretty stiff and rigid. Um, a little bit of that has to do with the segments, but the other part of it is that there's just nothing else affecting them. So we need to bring in a turbulence effector and the five centimeter default typically is never enough. So it is, you know, you can see them start to spin and twist now a little bit as they fall, but let's just crank this up to 50 and see what we get. Much better. You can see they're a little bit stiff like cards and one way we can fix that is just by upping the upping the segments a little bit so let's go five and four so just up them a little bit because a little bit goes a long way with this you can see they're actually a couple are bouncing into each other and you look from the bottom here they're doing okay. They're a little stiff, so we can also turn up the turbulence a little bit more. And the other thing, let's just take a look at this really fast before we do the other thing. The other thing we can do, okay, so we're getting some good bends on a few of these here. Um, in the simulation, we can go to the lift in the aerodynamics section under force. The lift is actually going to act as air under the object, which is actually going to push it around a little bit more, which will help it from falling so fast. You'll see that things kind of swoosh around a little bit more. They kind of float a little bit more. Gives it a little bit more natural look. Let's crank it up a little bit more. So once they kind of hit the top there, they're going to start falling and the lift is going to start affecting them. Good. So now that we have that, I actually want to increase the speed possibly a little more. Whoops. There we go. Kind of see what happens from the side view here. It's looking pretty nice. And it may be that you want some of them to fall differently. Some maybe you want heavy and some you want with more drag like this. So if you do want to do that, you can just duplicate the emitter and set the lift you know lower if you want some that fall a little bit heavier you know make it 10 percent and you can even you know i don't need all of them to be heavy so or double the amount to be heavy so we can decrease this to like three and three and i'd recommend changing the seed too just so because there are two emitters now and i don't want them to intersect And just really quick, if you want to see which ones are the heavy ones, because it's kind of hard to tell, just make a new material here and just make it a color and make another one. And just apply it here, apply a the other one there and right click the tag and hit copy to children and copy to children and then grab the dollar bills really quick and just make some random selection that isn't there and then you'll see the blue ones are the heavy ones should probably heavy at least make note of which ones are which <clears throat> so you should see those ones falling a bit faster just just to give you an idea of what exactly they're doing So I think that looks good. You'll see more of the red are left at the top and kind of swirling around. So just kind of adjust that to taste. And of course you can set your start and stop emission for whenever you want. All right, so those look good. Just We'll just go ahead and delete these for now and erase our selection. 
and I'm feeling good about cranking these up just a little bit. So we'll, we'll go 20 and 20, and we'll just double everything. See how that looks. It's looking pretty good. I do kind of want gravity to be a little stronger. So if I hit Command and Control D, you can actually pull up the project um, settings and go into dynamics and general. And this, I like adjusting gravity here versus adding a gravity force just because it adjusts gravity scene wide. So I might just increase that, you know, 50% to see what happens there. They're kind of falling a little slow for me. So that's feeling a little bit better. Scene starting to chug just a little bit. So if it happens, you know, of course, you could either cache the simulation or just decrease the segments. But let's say we're liking this. One thing you're going to notice is, depending on how close your camera is, that you're going to start to see um, some faceting here. So I'll show you quick how to take care of that. And just before I do, this little intersection here um, brings up a good point. Um, sometimes, depending on how many bills you have and how fast they're flying out, some of these bills might intersect and the dynamics won't necessarily like that. And sometimes you'll get bills that explode. Um, if that ever happens, there's a few ways to fix it. One is to just, the first thing to try is to change the emitter seed. Um, just so that the bills are in a slightly different position and then hopefully they won't intersect. The other way is to change the birth rate emitter amount. You might need to turn it down a little bit or you might need to make the emitter wider to give it more room for the bills to kind of spread themselves out and not crash into each other. So just a few different ways to solve that. So now back to fixing the faceting when you get really close, you can see, and maybe this is fine for how far away your camera is, but if you are close, you might, rather than turning up the segments and making your simulations bog down, which, which may be okay for the system you have, um, but the more efficient way would just be to cache it and put a subdivision surface on it. So let's go ahead and alt-click our subdivision surface to apply it to the two emitters. I'm actually just gonna get rid of this emitter for now, this heavy one, and we'll just work with the one for now so we don't have to do everything twice. So what you'll notice is <laughs> now our bills are rounded because this subdivision surface is obviously trying to smooth everything out and that includes the corners. So we need to fix that. In order to do that we need to convert these. So you may want to, you know, if you want to, if you're just trying this out, you may want to either copy the setup down here and turn it off or save the scene, but we're going to convert these to editable. I never like committing, hard committing things like that. I like leaving them editable when possible, but right now to fix this, we do need to convert these to editable. We're going to turn off the emitter really quick and just find our dollar bills. We'll turn them, we'll just look at one for right now and we'll be able to easily apply this to the rest. So so just grab your points and grab the loop selection tool and just grab the outside of the plane there. Now you're going to want to hold down period and click and drag and you'll notice the edge is there. It keeps the subdivision on the inside but it tells the the object the weighting to say, you know, don't affect the corners. So and you can see that if we click on the weight tool. I believe you can do it with the edges as well. Yeah, it works with the edges as well. But just to show you, you can select your points and then hold period and drag and it will change the weighting in those areas. So now that we have that, the nice thing is these are all the same. So we can just copy this weight tag to all the other objects. And just make things neat there. And we'll turn the emitter back on. And now we've got our, whoops, restart here. We've got our sharp corners back. And 
there is less fasting, but now we have the ability to dial that up if we want to smooth things out. So this will keep the system fast and also give you smoother subdivisions. But when you're caching, you can just turn the subdiv subdivision surface off. So now on to quick caching this thing. Um, I just like to use, again, Command D. I go to the Project Settings, Cache, and Bake. This caches all the dynamics in the scene versus like having to select them all or whatever. Um, just a quicker way. So and you'll probably notice it's going to be fast at the beginning and then it's going to slow down. And that's because... You know, we're creating hundreds of these things. And each of them has, you know, soft body springs attached to them. So that's a lot of calculations to cache. So we'll just wait here another second. All right, now that we have our scene cached, we can go ahead and play and we'll get nice, clean playback. And everything's looking great. I kind of like looking at it from the bottom to see the cash fly by the camera you can even move through it if you want of course you can adjust the emitters to you know shoot higher or you know behave in whatever way you want really quick I'm just gonna clear the cache and show you just if we take the emitter and bring the size way down we can kind of create, basically to nothing. We can basically create a little, oh, we can create a little money gun that's just gonna shoot these things out. <laughs> that's kind of fun. And uh, make sure when you're simming these things to turn subdivisions off because watch what happens if you don't. I'm gonna turn them back on it's going to keep them looking st stiff and straight until it's now but when you hit stop then it goes it clicks back on so make sure just to keep that off when you're previewing things but otherwise you can create a pretty cool looking money gun make it interactive and of course you could clone these onto a spline and have them move along as well that's another cool way to get money to kind of move how you want it to. It's kind of fun to see the money being created and just floating around in, in the viewport like that. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave those below. As always, the scene file will be available on the website for free, along with tons of other freebies we have. Um, there will be more freebies coming out soon. I think I have a few plugins that I'm going to put out in the free section as well on the website at alphapixel.net. So be sure to head over there and check things out. And I'm going to really try and stay more active on doing these tutorials for you guys. If you have any suggestions, feel free to reach out to me. I love problem solving, so don't hesitate to ask. Otherwise, be sure to check back. We'll have more tutorials soon, and we will see you guys in the next one.